do to make a better shot? What can I do to show yeah. somebody something that hasn't been seen? I'm shooting eagles and I'm having a great time and beautiful country, no complaints at all. There's a seal behind me, an otter in front of me, and eagles everywhere. These birds move so fast and there's yep. there's might be two or three or four birds at one time that are flying around and you gotta pick one. The spot that we found to stay, walk out the back door and there's eagles circling. In fact, I've seen a couple fly by while we're doing the podcast at eye level. You know, once we got into Homer um, and started driving around, we went out, you know, closer to the coastline and we saw a lot of eagles, but not what I was expecting to see. I was expecting to see the, the big numbers. Um given your last visit here and what had actually taken place. We didn't see the big numbers, but we did eventually uh, find three or four birds on the, on the shore. And one of them had a, it had a, a diving duck, fishing duck, uh, merganser or uh, loon. It had, it had killed the, the loon or merganser and was feeding on it on the beach. And I initially tried to, kind of circle it to get on the good side of the light to get some photographs and uh, it wasn't having any part of it but I think given what it did later I think it was more nervous about the other birds around its kill than it was you know about me uh, because there were a couple other birds right in the same area. The cool thing about Homer is it's and, and finding eagles is they're fairly used to people so they're fairly used to lots of boat traffic lots of car traffic people walking up and down there's a walking path so that's what makes it pretty good about photographing eagles because you they're acclimated they're not tame Mm -hmm. and they're not fed like they used to be in the old days but they will tolerate people so yeah yeah, i don't think you're gonna ever you know they you can't get within five feet of them but you can walk 20 yards away and they're just gonna sit there and look at you you get images no problem yeah and they were they were very tolerant because i was you know the the mountains were across the inlet and so i was trying to get in a position where i could get some some shots with the mountains in the background and they tolerated me crawling all over the ground getting getting down as low as i could moving side to side he just kept kept feeding and i was able to get some fairly graphic images of uh of that bird feeding on whatever it had killed there. It, it was hard to identify because the feathers were pulled out. All you could see was a, the the beak or bill and and some white feathers on the back. So identification was definitely not 100%. And I'm not any help here because I didn't go down with you. I The last time I was here, I was trying to remember, it was probably five or six years ago. Mm-hmm. And at that time, they used to allow the eagles to be fed by people. Well, like not like you're specifically going to go feed, but a fisherman might have the gut pile and they'll throw it out and then right. the eagles would eat it. Now you can't do that. So I thought, well, maybe the, the tolerance of these eagles has changed a little bit. So I didn't want to put two of us walking down there just to see if we could get a shot. So I didn't get to see right. any of this. I just was able to let you go down there and see what what you could get and what you could see and how tolerant they were going to be. But we quick, quickly realized it's not a big deal. No, they didn't seem to mind at all. And, and then, you know, we got some perched, um, got that bird. And then the, the few that were kind of harassing it, trying to get in and get a bite for themselves, got some good portraits. One of the things that I wanted was a, just a headshot. And I was able to get that on the first well, maybe first hour and a half that we were here. Yeah. So. Well, and it was kind of, we got here, what, middle of the afternoon or late afternoon? Late afternoon, yeah. And you didn't see a lot. And so we drove around quite a bit just to check stuff out, just to mm-hmm. see what the possibilities were. And <clears throat> But, you know, I didn't have a clue. And, and when we planned this, I was like, I have no idea what to expect. I didn't want to get anybody's hopes up. I knew how good it used to be. Right. And then I thought, well... We'll just have to see if it's if it's holding up or not. But mm-hmm. fast forward to this morning, I think. Yeah, things changed dramatically <laughs> this morning. 
So we we hired a a guy to take us across the inlet uh, to some islands. There's one island that's called Bird Island, and um, that seems to be where most of the eagles were. The spot. Yeah, there were there were eagles everywhere, and we we got all kinds of activity. I mean, the bonus part was I've talked to a couple friends that have been here in the last. Well, one friend and then uh, another acquaintance through a friend that have been here in the last few weeks um, on workshops, and they had overcast light, like heavily overcast light, and rain the whole time that they were here. Plus, they had some rough seas. Um, so the images they got, they weren't necessarily happy with anything but the the portraits that they were able to get, which you know that's that's one thing that I wanted to get also. Um, but this morning we had glass water in the little bay that we were in, uh, which made for some unbelievable opportunities to get reflections as these birds flew low, you know, looking for something to eat. And then the flight shots, we were able to get the mountains in the background, had excellent light on the birds. It was, I couldn't have asked for anything more except... To have multi-direction light <laughs> because I kept uh, the thing that I struggled with was getting them in sh- in shadow, getting their heads in shadow. Yeah, yeah. So, so two things on that. The um, you definitely got to you know we always talk about going to a place and spending ten days, right? Just so you can figure out what the opportunities are and then maximize those opportunities and and have enough time to do it. With weather being one of those things that gets in your way. Right. So it sounds like your buddies tried that. They ha- had some days here, but you can run into a stretch up here of seven or eight bad days of weather, right. and, and you're kind of hosed. But yeah, the problem they, with staying for 10 days is it's almost too long. Well, this time of year it is, yeah, because yeah. the opportunities are a little bit limited unless you're willing to charter a boat every day. And, you know, for a lot of people, that's just not feasible. Including us, that's a, including that's a us. Lot of money. We went for a morning, and it was it cost plenty. Yep. So, you know that's that's the if you don't have a boat, which we don't, um, then that's the only way to get across there is to to pay somebody to take you. And you got to track somebody down, figure out if they know. You know what's so important about that too is you got to find somebody that knows how to work with photographers. Because right. a lot of people don't know, oh, hey, we need the light over here, or we need to be pointed this direction, or if the wind's blowing this way, it'd be yeah. really great if we could be over in this spot. The guy we ended up finding had a clue. He's done this yeah, before. he knew so. exactly. And he even, I mean, not just the light, he was he was playing the wind and where he positioned us because he knew that, you know, those birds like to come in and hunt into the wind. So let's back up before the birds, because... Um, you being a marine wildlife guy. Oh, I totally forgot about that. <laughs> we yeah. didn't even get out of the marina and what'd you see? We yeah, we were in the marina still and we had we had seen a, a sea otter yesterday, but there were, was no opportunity to get any photographs. And then today as we're headed out of the marina, there's an otter right kinda in the mouth where you're where you're leaving the boat docks as into the open water. Well, the the guy that was that we had hired, he says, "Oh man, she's nursing a young one." Sure enough, so there's a nursing sea otter right at the mouth, and being in that protected area, it, the water was completely flat. It was phenomenal. So we got images of a nursing sea otter. First things this morning, and that was bonus. We had all we really wanted to do was get the eagles. You know, and that's what happens a lot up here in Alaska is you, you have a particular species in mind. It's like that trip we did last summer. We were going for sea otters, and then we ended up finding whales. So mm-hmm. you just never know what you're going to be up against. And you got to, and we talked about that with the boat captain this morning is, you know, everybody's got blinders on, and all they want is eagles when they come up here, and they're eagle, eagle, eagle. But there's so much more. I mean, there's whales, there's kittiwakes, there's puffins, there's um, otters, there's... I mean, you name it, you can, and you just got to be ready to pivot and make 
yeah make a shot at it or just make time for all this other stuff that you you take might take advantage see. don't pass up any opportunity because you don't know when it might come up again right and the the really good thing and we talk all the time about being being eye level and getting eye level to an animal that's right on the surface of the water is difficult and from a boat almost impossible but the boat that we had hired it was a landing craft so he just dropped the dropped the nose of the landing craft and I could lay down on the nose of the landing craft and get eye level with that otter. And, uh, you know, the only issue was we were in the marina. So you had the other boats to contend with as far as a background. So you had to be careful in choosing your background. But, yeah, I, I didn't get any world beater shots, but definitely some good documentary. That images. speaks to time mm -hmm. and... You know, we happened to have the perfect water too. It was flat yeah. water. There was there wasn't much of a wake at all, or it, not a wake, but waves or anything. So, for him to put that front down while we're out there floating was no big deal. Yeah, it's not like you're gonna yeah. get your camera gear wet or you're gonna get not even yeah, not yourself wet either. So. Yeah.